Good evening, my brothers and sisters. We greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We're going to prepare to begin our service in celebration of life. We're going to ask everyone who is standing around the chapel, if you'd be so kind to locate a seat, and we might be able to begin our service and celebration tonight. We want to ask all of you who have a cell phone or any electronic device, if you would be so kind to check it now to make sure that it's off or on vibrate so that it's not a distraction to the family, neither to our service. If you would do that for us, we would so greatly appreciate it. Again, we're going to kindly ask everyone to not only take a seat, but to cease from your conversations that we may be able to go through our order of service on tonight. Again, those of you who are greeting the family, if you would do so in a quiet fashion, and again, those of you who are standing about the chapel, if you would find a seat and take that seat, that we may go through our order of service on tonight. I'm going to ask that you would please, ma'am, please, sir, come where you see your name on the printed order of service to do exactly what has been asked of you to do by this family. We're going to have, is Brother Kenneth Mitchell here? All right, Brother Mitchell, if you would come with the hymn of comfort. Again, we're going to ask that you would please uh, hold your conversations. We want to be respectful to this family. Amen. Amen. And we want to do everything decently and in order. And so we're asking you to hold your conversations. Amen. If you just got to talk, if you just have to conversate, we're going to ask that you would do it out in the lobby or in the, in the hall. We want to come and we want to be respectful to this family. Amen. As we come tonight. Brother Kenneth Mitchell is going to come with our hymn of, of comfort. We'll come back with the Old and New Testament scripture followed by prayer. Again, I'm asking all of you that you would come where you see your name on the order of service. Again, to do what has been asked of you to do by the family. Amen. Uh, before I start to sing, I just wanted to say that uh, praise the Lord, because he is a good God, and he has gathered us again for not a happy occasion, but a sad occasion, but at the same time, we got to find some joy despite of the grief. And um, before this happened, I remember me, my sisters, and a couple of my friends were at my house, and we were talking about church. And somehow or another, I took the conversation left and was reminding them of how many funerals I've sung at and you know how we all need to really just get back into church and then you know the following day we got a phone call saying that my brother-in-law here DeWine passed away so I, you know I said I, I was tired of singing at funerals but I guess the Lord seen something different he said no you you can't be tired because you got another one to sing at you know so uh you know, I've had some good days. I had some hills to climb. I had some weary days and some sleepless nights. But when I stop and look around and, and I think things over, all of my good days, they outweigh the bad. And they turn into better days. I won't complain. I've had some good days. I've had some hills 
to climb. I've had some weary days. And some sleepless nights. But when I when I look around yeah, I think things over all of my good days outweigh my bad days I, I won't complain sometimes the clouds hang low I can hardly see the road. I asked the question, Lord, Lord, why, why so much pain? But he Although my weary eyes, they can't see, so I'll just say, thank you, Lord. I, I won't complain, cause God me he's been good to me more than this whole world or you could ever be he's been so good to me you know what he did then he tried, oh, my tears away. Then he turned my midnight into day. So I. Understood, but thank you, Lord. I, I won't complain because God has been so good to me, He's been mighty good to me. Midnight's in today. So I Amen.
Amen, amen. We'll have our Old and New Testament scripture reading uh, and followed by prayer. Old Testament scripture reading, uh, Sister Geneva. And we have our New Testament reading followed by prayer. Uh, Sister Stewart, if you all would come in that order. Good afternoon. My name is Giovanna Bacall, and I'll be reading out the Old Testament, Psalm 73, 23 to 26. Nevertheless, I am continually with thee. Thou hast holden me by my right side. Thou shalt guide me with thy counsel, and afterward receive me to glory. Whom I, whom I have had in heaven but thee, and there is none upon earth that I desire besides thee. My flesh and my heart fails, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. Hello, I'm Sharia Payne. I'm reading out of the New Testament, Revelations 21 and 4. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. Amen. Praise, praise the Lord, everybody. Listen, I'm, I'm just going to uh, give the prayer in our sister's place. Everybody just bow your head with me, Father. In the name of Jesus, we come giving you thanks, honor, and praise for everything that you've done. Every door open, every way made. You've been good. Even on a bad day, you've been good. Even on a tough day, you've been good. And as the song said, we won't complain, but we'll lift our voice and give you glory for all that you've done. And Lord, we thank you for the life of our brother, our son, our cousin, our nephew, our loved one. We thank you for the time that you've given You've given him to us. And Lord, we just ask that you would give comfort to the family now. Wipe away the tears. Help them to understand that he's in a better place. And just to, just to continue to give your name glory for all that has done, all you have done, and the life that he's lived. In Jesus' name we pray and we say thank God and amen. Amen. Thank you so much. We're going to have a selection at this time. Um, Amiri, I know I'm pronouncing that probably wrong. Amara. She's going to come and sing for us. And after she has done that, we're going to ask Sister Miller if she would come with the acknowledgments of Carnes and the condolences. What do you do when you've done all you can? And it seems like it's never enough. And what do you say when your friends turn away and you're all alone, alone? And tell me. How do you give when you gave all you can? And it seems like you can't make it through. Well, you just stand when there's nothing left to do. You just stand and watch the Lord see you through. Yes, after you've done all you can, you just 
stand and tell me how do you handle the guilt from your past tell me how do you handle the pain and tell me how do you smile when your heart has been broken and it's Good evening. My name is Sister Kim Miller, and it is with pleasure that I serve the family during this very difficult time. I will start with the acknowledgement of cards and move on to the obituary as I've been instructed. Thank you. A life well lived leaves behind a beautiful bouquet of memories. Wishing you memories to comfort you thinking of you now and in the days ahead with sympathy in the loss of your loved one. Love, Giovanna. The reading of the obituary. Dewan Markel Hayes was born March 17, 1976 in Columbia, Missouri. He was the first of three children born to Lisa Robinson and John Richardson. The family later moved to Detroit, Michigan, where Dewan spent his early years he attended Northwestern High School and graduated in 1994. After graduation, Dewan attended Ferris State University where he became a founding member of the BLACK Leaders Aspiring for Critical Knowledge Organization. Dewan graduated from Oakland Community College with a degree in interior design in 2014. Dewan accepted the Lord and was baptized at Greater Emmanuel Church of God in Christ in Detroit, Michigan, where he faithfully attended service until his demise. Dewan received his stylist license in 1994 and was premiered in state and national hairstyle competitions and magazines. He was a very talented young man and a fabulous creative hairstylist who left everyone leaving his chair feeling and looking good. Dewan loved to dance, read, draw, and had an infectious laugh. His creative interior design has enhanced the homes of many Michiganders. He had a distinct way of dressing. 
His smile and charismatic charm illuminated the room once he entered. The life of the party is definitely who he was. Dewan traveled the world and enjoyed the finer things in life, not only for himself, but others as well. He had a pure heart of gold. Dewan's gentle spirit left this earthly planet on Saturday, March 2nd, 2024. His father, John Richardson, sister, Andrea Robinson, and nephew, Keon Mitchell, preceded him in death. He leaves to cherish his precious memory. Mother, Lisa Robinson, sisters, Selena Hayes, Sarah Krejci, Sharita Krejci, and Crystal Krejci, brothers John J.R. Krejci and Joseph Krejci, a host of nieces, nephews, aunts, uncles, godchildren, and other friends. Dewan, my only son, I will miss you so, but God said it's time to go. You had a great life, and this I know, but God said, Dewan, it's time to go. You had the biggest heart, and this I know, but God said, it's time to go. So, son, I love you, and I will miss you so, but God said, Dewan, it's time for you to go. Love, mom. God's garden. God looked around his garden and found an empty place. He then looked down upon this earth and saw a tired face. He put his arms around you and lifted you up to rest. God's garden must be beautiful. He always takes the best. He knew you were in pain. He knew you would never get well on earth again. He saw that the road was getting rough and the hills were hard to climb. So he closed your weary eyelids and whispered, peace be thine. It broke our hearts to lose you, but you don't go alone, for part of us went with you. The day called you home. In memory's embrace, your light shall forever glow. Our cherished nephew departed yet near. We know through laughter and tears, your spirit shall abide in the echoes of memories where love will reside. Though time may pass and seasons come to an end, in our hearts, your presence will forever extend. With each whispered breeze and twinkling star, we feel your love shining from afar. Though words may falter and tears may fall like rain, in our memories, your laughter will forever remain. Though you've journeyed beyond this earthly shore, in our hearts, you'll live forevermore. Farewell, dear nephew, though we part with heavy hearts, your love and light shall never depart. Rest now in peace in heaven's tender embrace until we meet again in a more celestial space. Love, aunts and uncles. In solemn remembrance, as we gather here today to honor our brother who's gone away. Though parted by faith, our bond remains strong in memories cherished where you'll forever belong. With laughter and tears, we recall the days of shared adventures and familiar ways. Your presence, dear brother, a guiding light in the depths of our hearts burning ever bright. Through trials and triumphs, you stood by our side in moments of joy, in times when we cried. Though you've journeyed beyond this earthly realm, in our hearts your spirit will dwell forever. Farewell, dear brother. Though our hearts may grieve, your memory in our lives will always weave. Rest now in peace in heaven's embrace 
until we meet again in a more celestial place, space. Love, Krejci brothers and sisters. They say there is a reason. They say time will heal. Neither time or reason will change the way I feel. Gone are the days we used to share, but in my heart, you are always there. The gates of memories will never close. I miss you more than anybody knows. Love you and miss you every day till we meet again, always and forever. Love your sis, Selena. Dear family and friends, please be advised that I have moved. I received my call the other day from God. The chief architect informed me that my new home was complete. I knew my mansion required finished touches and the chief carpenter, Jesus, had to inspect it and give me the final approval on Saturday, March 2nd, 2024. He let me know that my mansion was complete and that I could move in. My new home is finished and, and what a sight to behold. It is in an exclusive estate area behind a beautiful pearly gate. Of course, you know the streets are paved with gold and every day is Sunday. Trees of fruit grace my garden and I can walk and talk with my master without a worry or care. My new home is much better than any other place I have ever lived. There is peace, joy, happiness, no pain, no strife or discontent, only sweet serenity. I dine at the master's bountiful table and listen to a heavenly choir. Best of all, my heavenly father is in all his glory. And let me tell you, I have my own designer who has fitted me with my very own white robe. Jesus and my loved ones and many friends were here to greet me. I could go on and on about my new home, but I'm going to pray that you get to move here yourself one day. Before I go, let me give you my new address, Dewan Hayes, One Heaven's Way, God's Town, Heaven, one, 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 one. Remember, I do not have a telephone, but you can always call on the Lord. If you do not know his number, read your Bible. It's listed on every page. Love, Dewan. The family of the late Dewan Markel Hayes wishes to acknowledge with deep appreciation the many comforting messages, floral tributes, prayers, and many other expressions of kindness and concern evidenced at this time in thought and deed. A more personal acknowledgement will be made at a later date. Amen. Thank you so much. God bless you. The program calls for remarks, and we want to extend the opportunity to just a few of you to come and share words that will be of comfort to the family. Everyone, as we see the love is great tonight, everyone will not be able to come in this particular setting. I'm looking for about four people that would like to come and share words to be a blessing to the family. If you so choose to be one of those four, I'm going to ask that you would come now to the podium to my right. Again, if there's at least four people that would like to come and give reflections tonight, you can do so by coming to the podium to my right. If you're coming, we would that you come now.
All right, come right on. I'm going to kindly ask everyone else to please hold your seats. Allow these who have come to share their remarks and reflections. And what I would say to you and what you ought to know is that those of you that don't get to share in this hour, what you should know and understand is that this family will need to hear from you long after we've left from this place today. And so what's not said or shared in this place, we encourage you to remember them in the days to come. Yes, ma'am. Hi, uh, my name is Karen Price, and I am a retired Detroit Public School employee. I taught at Clippert Academy, and Dewan attended school there. As a matter of fact, he was in the same class with my son. I just can't imagine what you're going through. I am, I am so sorry for your loss. Um, I just wanted to pay my respects. Thank you. Amen. Thank you so much. Hi, everyone. I'm the one on Joanne. I'm one of his fans. He used to do my hair. Every place he went, I went. <laughs> All of the places that you know, majority of the stylists that's in here have seen me there. Um, I'm thankful that you guys came out to help us um, honor my nephew. Um, my nephew was so cool with me that um, it's a lot that I want to say, but I do want to say one thing. Dewan, I took his name and gave it to my son because I bet none of y'all didn't know that. Dewan Michael has the same name as Dewan. His name is Michael Dewan Daniels. And that's why I did it, because he was always nice and cool and laid back, and he was always smiling. And I mean, you couldn't say too much that he didn't, you know, was right there with you or for you. So if you needed something, he was there. If you wanted to go someplace and he had a ride, he will take you. If you needed something to eat, he will make sure that you had something to eat. He was a good, good person, wholeheartedly. And like I said, I'm, I'm grateful that y'all came out to help honor him. Have a good day, and I'll see y'all later. How y'all doing? My name is Bud. I'm Dewan's cousin. Um, I just want to say a couple things as far as uh, when it comes to Dewan, I'll lose fingers and toes, and all of us combined will lose fingers and toes. You know, expressing, you know, what type of person he was in a good sense. Like he was one of the most like funniest, charismatic, um, smart. I mean, I could go on for days, but. Um, other than being his cousin, I had the opportunity to work with Dewan, and I saw him in his natural element. And like, it is, he was just radiant, the way people spoke to him, the way they felt about him, the way he made people feel, and all that. It was just nothing short of what admiration I have for him and, and how he inspired me to be you know, better at what it is that I do to make people feel that way. It, it was just amazing the way he made people feel and the way, you know, your spirits lift up when he came around. Like, I mean, I'm a broken record saying that he was, he was the life of the party. He was always, you know, a joy to be around. But he was definitely somebody to learn from. And one of the best things, like, I feel like I got from him was that he taught me never judge a person off what you see because you don't know what they saw. And in turn, in learning that, I viewed the world differently, you know, being around him. But you know, like I said, I just wanted to say this one thing about the wine. Like, it was so weird. Like the, the type of person he was, it was like almost like it was like he was like uh, like an angel on earth. If you bring it, you know what I'm saying. Like he had the ability to. I remember the wine going to a concert and 
he didn't even have a ticket. <laughs> he got in the concert and was on stage dancing with Bell Biv DeVoe, like, you know what I mean? Like, and that was just the type of person he was. It was like, he transcended physics and, and whatever you think he couldn't do, he had the ability to, he took trash and made like art, works of art out of it. You know what I mean? I would go in his house and be like, man, where you buy that from? Oh, I made it, you know what I mean? I saw his broken mirror and pieced it together and put, he just had like, to me, that's like God-like, like, like angel-like, you know, God blessed you to, to have that ability, and he definitely left his footprint here on earth, so I just wanted to say some things like that, so y'all have to take it. Right. Yeah, yeah. Greetings, everyone. My name is Stafford Watts. I am uh, Dewan's friend. Dewan was definitely a true friend of mine. I can go back to some times at Fair Status where I actually met Dewan at. Dewan hit some key points in my life. It was times when I had to call Dewan and say, Dewan, I need a few dollars. <laughs> can you help me out, sir? Now, we college students. So this man, this man was truly a blessing. It was a Sunday, I believe, I got the call, or someone called in, and I was on my way to church, and um, I said, uh, I saw the message, and I said, uh, wow, the wine made it home. That was it. Yes, uh, I'm Ernest Lanier, one of Dewan's really good friends. I just had to, I was sitting there thinking, I said, I can, all I can hear is Dewan in my ear, like, boy, if you don't get your behind up, it's me. <laughs> so I'm not a good speaker, but I just had to say, you know, uh, Dewan really made a big difference in my life. And um, um, I'm just looking at everybody around here and all the people that he just brought together. It's just really touching, you know, and um, I just want to say I love you guys, I love Dewan, and I'm really going to miss it, you know, and that's all, that's all I got to say. Good evening, everyone. My name is Ken Elkins. I also met Dewan at Ferris State University. I just want to talk a little bit about the impact he made at Ferris State for those who may not know. So some of the slides up there, you'll see him with a group of young men. So in 2019, Dewan, myself, and uh, five other brothers started an organization called Black Leaders Inspiring for Critical Knowledge. And so as freshmen, when Dewan, myself, and these other gentlemen, we used to get our hair cut at the same barbershop and just talked about struggles that we were having being young black men at Ferris a long way from home on a college campus, a white college campus, and just having a really hard time adapting to college life. And so with that, we decided, well, if we're facing this, I'm sure there's many of others like us that's facing this. And so we decided to start an organization, again, called Black, uh, Black Ladies Inspiring for Critical Knowledge. And at first, you know, we were very lackadaisical with, with the organization all very busy with things and doing our own thing. And Dewan was very close with Tavares Vaughn. I don't know if anyone know him as friends in here. Was very close with Tavares Vaughn. And that summer, Tavares Vaughn was shot sitting on his porch by accident. And so uh, Dewan, and I was his really close friend at Ferris. And so Dewan came back and he said, we have to do this. We have to continue this organization for T Tavares. Uh, for anything else, it's definitely for Tavares. And so that's what we did, pushing on. And with that, just leaving this, not bragging about the organization, bragging about the legacy that DeWine left with the organization. So the organization, thousands of men, young men and women, have gone through that organization from a foundation that he helped to build and that he helped to start. So for those of you who don't know that, an amazing brother who made a huge impact 
uh, to Ferris State University, a huge impact to the brothers, a huge impact on me. And so on behalf of black leaders and all the brothers and sisters of black leaders aspiring for critical knowledge, Brother Dewan, we say rest well. Thank you. Amen. God bless you. Beautiful. Come on, let's give God praise for that. That's beautiful. Amen. Beautiful. Beautiful. God bless you. Our director is going to come now and is coming. He's going to allow the immediate family and only those that make up the immediate family to come for their final viewing. If you are a part of the immediate family, you would like a final view of your loved one. We're asking that you would come at this time. Again, only those members of the immediate family, this is your time. We're asking the rest of you, those of you that believe in the power of prayer, know that prayer works and prayer changes things, that you would pray with them and pray for the family as they come. I'm going to ask, is it Amira Miller? Amira, I know I'm not probably pronouncing this wrong. If you would come, if you're here, to sing for us.
the horse. Again, praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Come on, praise the Lord, everybody. Come on, praise the Lord, everybody. We do, we do give honor to God, who is the head of our life, who's done so many wonderful things for us all. Amen. Uh, I understand that. Um, these services are very tough as they should be um, but of course the Bible says and we already we already know that in all things we give thanks uh, our, God's ways are not our ways his thoughts are not our thoughts but is there anybody here that can testify to the fact that when it all shakes out God always knows what's best doesn't it always work out in your favor can we give God let's let's just pray one more time father in the name of Jesus we thank you we thank you for this time we thank you for this space we thank you for this life that you've given and Lord again we just ask for comfort for the family at this time yeah we ask for comfort for the family at this time that you would wipe away the tears uh, that you would replace the grief and the sorrow with the joy of all of the memories, uh, the memories that we share, the good times, the laughter, and the joy. And we'll give your name all the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank God and amen. amen. Yes, uh, again, uh, I want to, um, uh, of course, bring um, greetings from my church home, from Dewan's church, uh, Greater Emmanuel. Uh, institutional Church of God in Christ, where our bishop, our leader, is uh, J. Drew Sheard. Uh, bishop J. Drew Sheard, First Lady is Karen Clark Sheard, and of course, uh, there are some greater Emmanuel people here today. Um, this young man was loved and appreciated by his church home, uh, and we just want to come and, uh, and just be a part of what's going on and make sure we send him home right. Amen? Amen. Um, First, Second Timothy uh, chapter 4, and I know we've all been sitting, but if you wouldn't mind, if you could stand with me um, for the reading of the Word of God, I would appreciate it. His mom, mom, you don't have to stand if you don't. You can, you can stay seated, but if everyone else could stand, would appreciate it. Just going to talk to you for a few moments and move on out of the way. That's all right. Uh, the scripture is Second Timothy chapter 4. Verse 7, verses 7 and 8. It says, I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day. And not to me only, but unto all them also that love his appearing want to place emphasis on the first portion of that verse 7 where it says I have fought a good fight and I want to uh, just encourage you all just look at somebody and can you help me and just say make it a good fight just make it a good fight all right you may take your seat uh, you may take your seat listen there is a um, there's a there's, there's a movie uh, starring two two of the most two of the most well-known comedians of our time, uh, Martin Lawrence and uh, Eddie Murphy. And uh, in this movie, there's a scene where what starts out as a verbal confrontation between Eddie Murphy's character, whose name is Ray, and another character whose name is Goldmouth. He's a big individual. This verbal confrontation becomes a physical confrontation. They start fighting. 
uh, and now Goldmouth is bigger and stronger and has the support of all the other prisoners. Uh, and as expected, Goldmouth begins to put a beating on Eddie Murphy, Eddie Murphy's character. Again, his name is Ray. And no matter how much Ray tries to fight, he cannot overcome the beating. Goldmouth throws him down and walks away assuming that the fight is over. And just when he thinks Ray is down for the final time, just when he thinks that Ray can't take no more, there's nothing else he needs to do, Ray jumps back to his feet one more time, tell him where you going, this fight ain't over with. For those of you who have not caught it by now, the name of that movie is called Life. And you know, we're, we're here to mourn the passing of our brother as we should. But if you could find one silver lining within the dark clouds, it is that he no longer has to be tossed to and fro by the stormy seas of life. Can you do me a favor? Uh, if you would, help me. Just look at your neighbor and just tell him this. Tell him, life be lifing. Man, they may not know what that means. That means that life is a trip sometime. Oh, can y'all get with me for a few minutes in here today? All the people with a perfect life, be quiet just for a second. Y'all like, yeah, there you would go. Life be life and it acts a fool. Listen, I, I, I thank God for it and I'm not trying to leave before my time, but I'm real about what it is and life can sometimes be ruthless and relenting. Is there anybody here that can agree with me? Even for those of us who are blessed and highly favored, anybody blessed and highly favored in here other than me? Even for those of us who can acknowledge how good God has been, we can say it because we can compare what he's done for us to what the devil has tried to do to us. It's not a coincidence that we often say that if it had not been for the Lord who was on my side, that means that there was something else trying to do something to you, but God stepped in and snatched you back from the hand of the enemy. Is there anybody here God ever stepped in on your behalf? When the enemy came in like a flood, God lifted up a standard. That means he saved you. With the temptation, God made a way for escape. That means he spared you. Psalms 34 and 6, it says, This poor man cried, and the Lord heard him and saved him from all of his troubles. God heard him and saved him. God heard him and saved him. Is there anybody here that you know God heard you and he saved you? Yeah, how, how, so how can we give God glory on such an occasion as this? Because we know that God didn't just take our brother, but the Lord heard him and saved him. Yeah, he heard the cries and he delivered them out of him all. Anything that once caused so much pain can no longer hurt him anymore, mother. The stresses, the anxieties of life, whatever worries or concerns, problems or people, anything that may have put trouble in his way, I urge you to find joy in knowing that those things are now passed away and we believe that his life has now become new. And yes, I did say life because I, I don't want you to allow your grief to deceive you about what's happening here today because for those of us who accept the Lord as our personal savior 2 Corinthians 5 and 8 says that we are can, uh, uh, confident and I say willing rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord Hebrews 13 and 14 says this world is not our permanent home we are looking forward to a home yet to come therefore let us through Jesus Christ uh, offer a continuous praise to our Lord how can we give God glory how can we give God praise even at a home going the answer is simple because it's a home going yeah, yeah, we're giving him praise because our brother is going home. Is there anybody here that can give God a little bit of glory in here? Because our brother is going home. Do you believe he's going home today? Yeah, see, we believe that. And that's, and, and, and because we believe that, he's okay. Somebody, just tell your neighbor he's okay. He's okay. And encourage somebody and say he's okay. His, his suffering is over. The clouds have passed away. We believe his soul is in the hands of the Father, don't we? Yeah, but even though he's okay, we remain. 
And for those of us who remain, we've still got to deal with the pain. Am I right? Yeah, I, I started off talking about the, the movie Life and how the character Ray took such a beating. And there's somebody in the room in the same position as our friend Ray where you, can I preach to you for a second? Yeah, yeah where you have been getting beat down by life. You've been willing to fight. You've been ready to fight. And I'm sure, uh, I, I, I got a feeling, uh, don't get offended, I'm just being real. Can I just, we cousins, can I just be real with you? I, I got a feeling I got two or three thugs in the building. I, I, male or female, praise God. And you are good with your hands if you must say so yourself. Can you talk back to me in here? You can whoop some folks and you got the list to prove it. But life don't fight fairly, nor does it fight physically. Yeah, you nice with yours, yeah. But is there anybody here that can admit that no matter how hard I fight, how hard I press sometimes, how much I live uh, uh, to fight, I just can't seem to put a KO on life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anybody got problems in real life? Yeah, yeah. Anybody got problems in real life? I go hard and I do the best I can. I live all I know how. But is there anybody here that can admit sometimes I just can't seem to gain the advantage against this life thing that I've been fighting against? It's, it's bigger than me than me and even with all my heart and will and tenacity I still can't seem to avoid this beat down sometime listen I know this is a home going and and home going services are not traditional services and trust me I have seen some things at home going uh, even in churches that will make your jaw drop I've seen some fighting and some fussing I've even seen some cursing and some twerking I've, I've seen it you name it I've seen it but rather you are a church goer or a church passer you are still suffering through something that you need the Lord to deliver you from right now. I, I know I'm telling the truth. And, and God sent me here with the word because even though you've been beaten down and you refuse, you've been beaten down, hear this, you refuse to stay down. Is there anybody here? Uh, is there anybody here that can fix your mouth to declare that, yeah, I've been beaten down, but I refuse to lay down. We gonna fight until you quit or until I win. But is there anybody here that can say, this battle does not end with anything less than victory for me. Yeah, I'm trying to get some victory from somebody in the room here. Is there anybody that needs some victory in your life? Is, is there anybody that can take a W over all the L's you've been taking? I, well, if you don't say nothing, you won't get nothing. Can we just have church for a minute? Everybody that's looking for a victory, can you lift your voice right now and believe that if God hears your voice, so listen, I gotta go. Here's Ray and Goldmouth. Go back to the movies with me. They are going at it and Goldmouth knocks Ray down once more with a blow that's harder and more vicious than any other. But before he can hit him one more time, hear this, there's a subtle voice that speaks out from among the crowd and the voice simply says, that's it. Yeah, it says it's over. Don't hit him no more. Uh, the man has taken enough. Somebody say enough, enough, enough. Uh, is there anybody here that's taken enough, enough, enough? Yeah. Uh, if, if you watch the movie, you will see that the voice does not declare Goldmouth the winner. He specifically instructs him, instructs him to stop swinging because his adversary has taken enough. Somebody say enough. See, 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 it wasn't that the prisoners believed that Ray could win. Uh, the whole point of the fight was to see if Ray could take a beating and keep coming back. See, my friends, how would you give God glory if I told you that I can hear the voice of the Lord calling off the attack of the enemy on your life? Oh, y'all ain't praising him for it. Yeah. Not because the enemy wins but because he wanted to see if you could take a beating and keep coming back and getting on your knees and keep praying he, he wants to see he wants to see if you could take a beating and keep getting back up and, and on your feet and standing he wanted to see if you could take a beating and keep declaring that everything is working for your good even when it don't look good don't feel good don't smell good somebody lift your voice and say it's still gonna be good it's, yeah. do you believe that in the room yeah, uh, yeah. he wants to see if you could take a beating and still declare that though he slay me, yet will I 
trust him. L listen, this is how people get victory that got victory. Uh, it wasn't that they just jumped into victory. It's how you behave when it's not going your way. It's how you respond when it's not working in your favor. That's how you win. It doesn't just happen to you, but it's the way that you respond when you're not winning that gets you the win. Yeah. Is there anybody here that wants to win? Yeah. If you want to win, I believe that God uh, can see that this portion of your life, from this trial in your life, you have taken enough of a beating. Is there anybody here taking enough of a beating in here? Yeah, 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 yeah. I believe it. I believe it. And he's about to tell that thing that's been beating you, don't touch him no more. Yeah. Don't lay another hand on her anymore. Uh, how how y'all like this? Don't touch her money no more, y'all. Um, yes, uh, keep your hands off her children in here, yeah. I wish somebody would just make a little more noise if you believe that God is telling the enemy that's enough. Leave him alone, leave him alone, leave him alone, leave her alone, leave her alone. Then listen, listen, check this out. The voice tells Goldmouth, don't touch him no more. That man has taken enough of a beating. Then he says, pick him up and carry him on the inside. Hear this. The voice not only tells Ray, Ray's adversary to stop beating him, but then he commands the very thing that's been beating him to now pick him up and carry him. Yeah. I declare over your life. Can I speak some good things over your life? life in here. Oh, y'all don't want it. Don't, I won't say it. Can I speak some good things over your life? That everything that has been beating you down are the same thing that's about to pick you up again. Right? Uh, the same places and the same people that watch you lose are going to be the same places and people that's going to see you win. L listen, Ray lost that fight, but the voice told his adversary, pick him up, pick him up, pick him up. Can somebody just ask the Lord, pick me up, pick me up. I, I don't know where you are, but just pick me up. It ain't my business what, what you're down in, but just pick me up. Is there anybody here need to pick me up in the room? I, uh, I serve a God that specializes, y'all. Uh, I feel like I'm getting happy. And, and listen, check this out. Goldmouth not only picks Ray up, but hear this, he carries him, but he picks him up and places him on his shoulders. Yeah. The only time I've seen a fighter carried out of the ring on somebody's shoulders is when that fighter has won the victory. Yeah. Losers are carried out on stretchers but victors are carried out on shoulders yeah how would you give God glory if I told you again that God is about to command the very thing that's been beating you down to pick you up and carry you to victory yeah uh, that very job that's been beaten on you pick him up now those money problems can I talk about it here uh, pick it up now yeah family problems pick it up now is, uh, is there anybody here that can give God some glory on the belief that that very thing yeah, yeah, yeah. There's some dark times ahead from somebody, but uh, but those dark times are going to turn into times that make you laugh. They're going to make you smile. Yeah, The very thing that made you cry is going to make you smile. It's, it's enough sadness, enough darkness, enough pain, enough brokenness. I can hear the voice of the Lord commanding that thing. That's enough. Pick them up. Yeah, and 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 I took a beating. Is is there anybody here that 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 can say that can be honest with me and say, yeah, I done took some blows. I done took some blows. I, I've taken some beatings, but hear this, and I'm coming to my close. Paul says, I fought the good fight. He says, I fought a good fight, and I have finished my course. Yeah, I have kept the faith. Now, hear that. Nowhere in the scripture does Paul say that he whooped anybody. What 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 Paul? Uh, how is it a good fight if you didn't? whoop anybody it's a good fight because I finished it yeah 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 uh, it should have broke me down but I finished it yeah it should have stole my joy but I finished it it, it should have made me run for my life but I stood my ground and I wouldn't back down it should have made me quit but I finished it. it is there anybody here willing to finish it yeah oh my god God is just saying finish it yeah, yeah you may not look like you're winning but you finish it yeah and not only did I finish the fight but I kept the faith yeah anybody in here keeping the faith yeah uh, 
Uh, anybody here yet holding on? Yeah, uh, Holding on is one thing, but yet holding on means that there's some stuff happening, but I'm still not letting go. Yeah, Is there anybody here not letting go? Yeah, As bad as it got for me, and it got mighty bad. Anybody got mighty bad in the room? But I still gave God the glory. I, I still opened my mouth in worship. I still told everybody that would listen that God's got a plan. God's going to get me out. God's going to give me victory. No matter how things look, I still believe that the God I serve is a way maker. Oh, do you believe it in here? He's a chain breaker. Uh, he's a burden bearer. Yeah, He's a heavy load sharer. Uh, he's a heart fixer, a mind regulator. I've been down for the couch, but he picked me up. I may have lost a few rounds, but he turned it around. Many of the afflictions of the righteous, even when I was righteous, but the Lord would deliver them out of them all. Is there anybody here that believe what I'm saying in here? Is there anybody here that can be uh, that can be proxy for it? Is there anybody here that can testify to it? Yeah. Won't he make a way for you? Won't he open the door for you? Won't he bring you out of it? Or oh, somebody needs to hear your voice. Somebody ain't gave God some glory in a long time. If you believe that he'll do it, why don't you give him glory for it right now? I don't have to wait for it to be finished. The battle is already won. All I got to do is finish. All I got to do is keep the faith, and I'm going to have the victory. All the losers, be quiet. But if you got the victory, come on, have church with me for a minute. Do you got the victory in here? I don't care what it looks like, I'm a winner. I don't care what it looks like, I'm going to smile. I don't care what it looks like, I'm going to laugh. I don't care what it looks like, everything is going to be all right. If you believe it, say yeah. If you believe it, shout yeah. If you believe it, scream yeah. Uh, everybody stand with me. Everybody stand with me. Y'all forgive me. I. Y'all forgive me. I. I. I know that the mood or the temperament of a home-going service is supposed to be sad and somber. But I've learned that uh, I just can't give too much space to sad and somber. Uh, it's a song that say you can be down only one night though. Yeah. Uh, you can be sad but only one night though. And what I've learned is one night is too long. Y'all ain't talking to me. Yeah, yeah, because in spite of it all, God has still been good. Listen, Paul said a good fight. Stand with me if you would. Paul said a good fight. And it has nothing to do with how many blows he lands. But a good fight is one where with everything the devil tried to do to me, I stood my ground. Is the devil trying to do anything to anybody in the room? Look at somebody and say, stand your ground, stand your ground. I kept pushing and I finished. Somebody lift your voice and say, finish, finish, finish. And with everything God allowed to happen to me, I kept smiling, I kept praising. And most importantly, I kept the faith. Tell somebody, keep the faith, keep the faith. And because I kept those two things, I get to verse 8. Whoever says there is a crown of righteousness that the Lord shall give me at that day. Uh, that line is for our brother. But the next line is for all of us. It says, and not to me only, but unto all them also that love his appearance. Is there anybody here that loves Jesus? Oh, yeah. Is there anybody here that really loves my Lord? Through all the beating and all the pain, somebody say, there's still a crown for me. There is a crown of life, and there is a crown in life. Oh my God. Just because you're not gone does not mean that you can't wear a crown. The Bible says that they that suffer shall also reign. I got some stuff to get while I'm here and I'm still gonna get it. Is it anybody in here? Pray with me, Father, in the name of Jesus. 
Everybody lift your hands if you would. Father, in the name of Jesus, there may be someone under the sound of my voice who has not accepted you as their savior. But Lord, here we are with our hands lifted and our hearts open asking that you would come on in. Somebody lift your voice and just say, Lord, save me. Lord, forgive me. Lord, bring me back in. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. We need you right now, God. We need you like never before. And Lord, we give you thanks for all of your forgiving power. We give you thanks for all of your redirecting and your regenerating power. We thank you for the life of our brother. But Lord, I'm asking that you would do something great in the life of every single person under the sound of my voice. Give them strength as they walk out of these doors to withstand the attack of the enemy, knowing that if we can just finish and keep the faith, that there's going to be a crown for us in life. And we thank you for the crown in advance right now. We thank, we clap our hands, we open our mouths, and we give your name glory for the blessings that you've given us. Praise God, I'm finished. Thank you for this time. I pray something was said. Please remain standing if you could. I pray something was said that would bless your life. Uh, Brothers, you can come on now and we'll go ahead and we'll commit our brother and we'll send him home. You ready? For as it has pleased Almighty God to take out of this world our deceased, Dewan Markel Hayes, we commit his body to Mother Earth, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust, looking for the general resurrection in the last day and the life of the world to come through our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose second coming and glorious majesty to judge the world, the earth and the sea shall give up their dead and the corruptible bodies of those who sleep in, who sleep in him shall be changed and made like unto his own glorious body according to the working whereby he is able to subdue all things unto himself. If you could, bring it down with for me a little bit, brother musician. We're going to give, we're going to go into the Lord's Prayer. If you could repeat it after me, would you do that, please? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us of our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom the power and the glory now and forever amen and I hear a voice from heaven saying unto me Blessed are the dead who dies in the Lord, for henceforth, yea, saith the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors and their works, do follow them. Now my God, may the God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, the great shepherd of the sheep, by the blood of the eternal Jesus, equip you to do his will working in, 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 you, in you that which is pleasing in his sight. Through Jesus Christ, to whom be the glory forever and ever. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Somebody say amen. amen. Amen.
if you want to know oh, where I'm going, where I'm going soon, if I can take the pain, Lord, Go! Oh. 